You know, he told Adam to till the garden. He didn't tell Adam to just sit and do nothing. He told him to work. Paul says elsewhere in the, in the book of Thessalonians, to work with your hands. Right? You might provide for yourself and help those in need. Verse 6, Godliness with contempt is great gain. 4, verse 7, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, We brought nothing into this world. It is certain we can carry nothing up. And having food and clothing, raiment, let us be there with contempt. It makes no sense to try to heap up a bunch of treasure on earth. You can't take it with you. You brought nothing in, you can't take anything out. So why would you amass a fortune? Well, you say, well, I want to enjoy my life. I know I'm going to die, but I'm going to live it up while I got it. Well, God calls you a fool for wanting to live that life of ease. Not a life of ease. We're called to work. We're called to share the gospel with others. We're called to help the poor. We're called to live godly. To forsake the world, to contemn it, despise it, all of its riches and glamour and glory of the world. We're to view it with contempt and look at the world as despicable. It has nothing to do with God. Notice he doesn't even mention, Paul doesn't even mention houses to be content. He just says clothing. He says food and clothing to be content. He didn't even mention a house. Look, most of us have houses, apartments. And Jesus, he forsook his own house. I don't know if he sold it or if he gave it away. But at some point, he forsook it. He said, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So much for the prosperity preacher. Joel Osteen lived in a $10 million house. Now, is that really necessary? To have 40 or 50 bedrooms? You know, however many square feet that is, $10 million, I don't know, it's probably 10,000 square feet, more, maybe 20 or 30,000, I have no idea. Is that necessary? You living in a, in a palace like that? That's the life of ease. He's not working. Oh, he writes a book. He's not a Christian, first of all. Neither is T.D. Jakes or Joyce Myers. And she's not even be in the pulpit because she's a woman. But those prosperity pe preachers, Benny Hinn, Free Flow Dollar, uh, you know, there's many others, I can't think of all their names, but uh, John Hagee. Those people are living life of luxury. They're rich, filthy rich. And they're making, they've made themselves filthy rich off of the cloak of Christianity. They get unsuspecting. Christians. And most of them probably are not even true Christians. They've never truly been converted. And if they knew their Bible, they wouldn't be following those false preachers like that. But as it is, they do. In verse 9, it says, For they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And in many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. You think you want to be rich, but you don't understand all the all the temptations that would come your way if, if you were rich, if you had all that money. You drowned yourself in perdition and destruction. Hurtful lust, foolish lust. The 
Yeah, you can have any man, any woman you want. You got a lot of money. You have a bunch of beautiful people. Because they want money too. They want that life of ease. Yeah, they want that life of ease. They want that life of ease. Want that life of ease. But that, as a Christian, you need to despise that. That's, that's not what it's about. Whatever you do, you do it as unto the Lord. You work with your hands. You keep the Word of God on your mind. You keep God on your mind. That's what happens. If you, if, you die, if you want to be rich, you're going to fall into temptation and a snare. Okay? You don't understand that. But you would, if you had the money, you'd destroy yourself. And finally, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. There it is. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what people want. That's what destroys people. That's what gets people killed. Money. The love of money. They love money. They don't care about God. They don't care about the poor. They just they care about themselves. They love themselves. I'm gonna do me, you know, that's what they're saying, everybody's saying Facebook, I'll do me. I love me. Anyway, it's about you love God and you love your neighbor and you love yourself last. They don't understand that because they don't know their Bibles. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Christians going out for money. Paul says they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Trying to get rich. Trying to chase the almighty dollar. And for the Christian, money should mean nothing to you. It means nothing to me. Just something I can help other people with. That's all I view it. To put food on my table, clothes on my back, wheels under my feet, I can get around, I can work, I can provide for myself, my loved ones, my friends, and even my even my enemies if they if they need help too. I'll buy them food. I'll give them clothes. If that opportunity was in front of me, I would. <laughs> So, I'm going to stop from the close there. Uh, I think you get the point. We'll be content. We'll focus on godliness. Our reward is in heaven. Jesus will prepare a mansion for us in the new earth. He'll build it himself. We don't need all that right now. Right now, we need to focus on the gospel. On the promoting, spreading the gospel. Making disciples. The church. Building the church, helping the poor. That's all part of it. And he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. And he who finds his life will lose it. So if, you, if, you don't, if you try to keep everything for yourself, you're going to lose it in the end. But if you give everything away, then you're going to find it. You're going to find it in Christ. Right? Then you'll be happy. You'll be content. You'll, you will have found what you were looking for. True contentment, peace, mind, love, happiness, joy. That all comes with giving away. And the book of Acts says, and Jesus says, more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Let us close the word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy, righteous word. Uh, help us to live your word, to not seek after riches, but to seek after you and your kingdom, your righteousness. The work, know that you will provide for us everything we need. We ask the grace to help those in need uh, when we're able, Lord, to help the poor, those who are less fortunate. We know we'll lay up treasure for ourselves in heaven when we do that, and it's pleasing your sight when we help the less fortunate, especially little children. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Christ's name. Amen.